Hello everyone, it's the first week in May and of course time for a brand new prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium and we're calling this month the mini month of May. We're going to be doing mini projects throughout the whole of the month. Now the challenge for week one is either um, altered playing cards or artist trading cards. Um, I've got a pack of um, playing cards here, these are just cheap ones from the pound shop and let me tell you um, the sizes. Now the playing cards that I've got here, which I think is fairly standard are three and a half by two and a quarter whereas artist trading cards are three and a half by two and a half so just a quarter of an inch difference um, in the width um, you can do both or either if you want to so we just felt that um, not everybody would have um, a pack of playing cards at hand so if you want to do artist trading cards instead then feel free to do so now, when I've done altered playing card projects in the past, I like to glue several cards together just because I think one on its own is just too flimsy and I just like mine to be a bit more firmer than that. So I've put three combinations together here. Um, I want to have um, one of the cards facing um, outwards just so that you can see that it's an altered playing card um, and then one facing to the top. Um, I wanted one with quite a bit of um, white space. So here I've got the three, um, the two and the um, eight. Um, so th those are my combinations, three together. And I'm just going to glue these using um, a regular glue stick. I'm not going to spend much time showing you this because you all know how to um, glue, but I'm just uh, making sure that I apply plenty to the edges. Um, you can, of course, use matte medium um, or, um, well, in fact, I think I'd uh, be inclined to use tacky glue, which is a bit stronger, but um, certainly this prick stick is plenty um, strong enough. So this one's going to go in the middle. Um, this Pritt stick is really, really sticky. Let's turn that over so that we've got some, a nice clean piece of deli paper to work on. And again, just make sure that you get plenty um, around the edges just so that they don't come unstuck. There we go. I really go to town with this. And again, just place, um, whoops, place that one um, on top. And that's it. And then, of course, I'm just going to have to let these um, dry for um, a minute or two. I've just used a baby wipe just to wipe off any excess glue that's on the back um, and front of my card stacks like this and I'm just going to sandwich them um, in between a piece of deli paper like this and I'm just going to weight these down underneath a heavy book just to make sure that that glue grabs properly. Whilst my cards are drying, let me just give you some ideas as the types of things that you can use to cover these. Um, now, I personally like to be able to see the detail of the playing card um, underneath my top layer, just so that you can tell um, what it is that it's an altered playing card. So, for instance, this is a napkin here and you can see um, the card underneath. Um, I think that would be a lovely idea. Um, I've just got some regular tissue paper gift wrap here. And again, this is so thin, you can see the layers um, underneath underneath so that would be um, another idea. I've got some black and white tissue paper here that would be fabulous as a as a background and then some kind of uh, focal image on top and this is some of the Tim Holtz Horlogery um, gift wrap tissue paper that's um, this stuff here the ideology um, so what's this called tissue wrap um, and again you know that would be absolutely fabulous with some kind of um, focal image um, on top so just some ideas as to the types of things you can use. My cards have been weighted down underneath that heavy book for about five or ten minutes or so and you can see that they're nice and flat the cards are nicely um, glued together so I'm happy with those and for my focal image I'm going to use this piece of um, rice paper Alice in Wonderland themed rice paper I always think that Alice in Wonderland goes absolutely beautifully with playing cards um, you can see here that we've got um, you know all of the suits here just absolutely wonderful we've got the suits in the background as well the hearts clubs etc um, so that's what I'm going to um, use what I will do is cut these um, into pieces though just so that they're much easier for me to um, use and you can see that these are translucent um, just like the pieces of um, paper that I showed you earlier just like the napkins and the tissue papers I mean for instance if I show you this you can see the details of the card underneath that and by the time I've added glue as well it will become even more translucent so I'm just going to go off and um, cut these apart black one I'm going to use this um, panel here um, and what I'm going to try and do is um, 
just centralize this section here in between those twos just like that so I'm just having a look to see how I might want to um, place it I'm going to use matte medium to glue it down so I'm just going to put um, a, a generous amount here um, I'm going to work on a piece of deli paper here just to save my parchment paper underneath oh this is all glued together let's work on it like this that's um that's fine so i'm just going to apply a generous amount of matte medium all over the base of my playing card just like just like this um again just make sure that you get plenty around the edges because that's where it's most likely to come unstuck so we'll do this just like that let me just move these cards out of the way just so that um, i don't get anything stuck to those there we are um, and then I'm just going to take uh, my piece of rice paper I got this from um, eBay by the way so if you search Stamperia rice paper Alice in Wonderland you should um, you should find it it's um, readily available so I just want to make sure that that's yep I'm happy with that and again bring back my paintbrush and I'm just going to apply more of the matte medium over the top which will make it even more translucent work from the center and work your way your way out and then again I'm just going to have to um, set that to one side just for the glue to dry matte medium dries really quickly you can heat it with a heat tool if you want to I'm just going to leave this to dry naturally just make sure that you get rid of um, any air bubbles as I'm doing here just really press it down around the edges just like this and then we can do um, another one so that's the first one. Now I'm just going to peel that um, off the backing paper here and I'm just going to stick that onto a fresh piece of deli paper and set it off to one side to dry. Now for this one here I want to use Curiouser and Curiouser so again I'm just going to add matte medium all over the base of my card. Again just paying particular attention to the edges just like this. This project is just so quick um, and easy to do. You just need to um, choose your focal images really well. And again, I'm just going to make sure that I get this part here centralised between those, those threes. So about there, like that. And I want Curiouser and Curiouser to go on the bottom. I want that um, visible. Try not to chop off her head, off with her head. <laughs> we don't want it off with Alice's head. Um, and again, just make sure that I've got plenty um, of matte medium over the top, just um, spreading it out from the centre just to get rid of um, any air bubbles. And pressing down all around the um, edges as well. Now this one here is a bit more tricky because of course we've got Wonderland is better and when you are completely lost and of course if I have the whole of Alice in the frame then I only get half um, of the quotes so you've got to make a decision that you're either happy to have the whole of Alice on there or you want the quotes I think it will look better with the quotes and half of Alice so that's what I'm going to do so again I'm just going to apply my glue or matte medium as it were. I think matte medium with um, anything thin like um, decoupage paper, rice paper, napkins, that type of thing um, is quite quite adequate. With anything heavier you'll need to use um, something stronger like um, tacky glue and so I'm just going to focus um, on the quotes here just making sure that um, I've got those in frame. Um, I want Wonderland on the bottom as well so I think that will be fine um, and again just apply more of the matte medium over the top and can you see how the matte medium just really brightens um, everything these are the first two I did and you can see that these are now dry and I'm just going to use my nail file my emery board just to get rid of the um, excess which is the rougher side and you can see that it just comes away really um, easily so I'm just going to go all the way around the edges until I've removed all of the um, excess. And you can see that it helps to burnish the edges down and gives you a really nice finish um, as well. I've had these weighted down underneath a heavy book um, again, just in between a piece of um, deli paper like this. So again, they're nice and flat. 
let me just um, remove those bring back um, an old tatty piece of deli paper because what I want to do now is just ink around the edges don't these look so pretty I'm going to use distress ink in frayed burlap just because this is um, quite a, a light color not too dark um, but it would just get rid of those um, white white edges so I'm just going to go um, around the edges just like just like this um, it'll also grunge grunge it up a bit and um, give it more of that um, vintage vintage look there we go can you see the difference now I'm also going back over and doing it on the back as well just because I always think that the backs then look um, too white so you need to make it all um, work together in harmony which one um, haven't I done so I'll do the same with this one here um, and then that's um, that's that now I'm just adding a touch of gathered twigs just around the edge like this, not using my tool, just using the pad um, directly, just because I want a slightly darker, um, very thin line around the um, edge, just like this. And that's made um, all the difference. I love how that looks. Really happy um, with that. And um, so there they are. The twigs has just made all the difference of course I could leave these as they are they look absolutely beautiful and you could send these out um, or you know pop them into a journal exactly as they are but I do want to add one more finishing touch I want to um, add a couple of charms and I'm going to use my cropper dial um, let me just get the um, right end now I've decided that I'm going to go in the opposite um, corner to where um, Alice is so in this case here it's this corner here I'm just going to um, eyeball it. I want it fairly close um, to the edge just so that I can get um, a jump, jump ring through it. So there we go. Um, on this one here, I'm going to go in, in this corner. Hang on a second. Let me just um, grab something to remove the paper. So in this one here, we'll go here just, just like that. Um, remove the paper again could do with my pokey tool I'm not sure where where I've put it and in this one here we'll go in this this corner so I'm just eyeballing it there we go that's um that's fine and then I've got some um silver colored silver toned um brads eyelets sorry so I'm just going to give these um a really good squeeze so uh, that that's the direction um I'm using my um my tool in hang on a second the Highlight it has come out so I'm just going to give that um, a really good really good squeeze there we go just just like that and I'm going to do the same on all of these so just popping these um these eyelets in and squeezing with my cropper dial there we go and the same with this one here I was originally just going to add um, a jump ring and a charm through these, but I just feel as if I want to add some fabric. Um, I've got some gorgeous sari silk here that I got from a UK seller and I'll leave the name um, on the screen because I can't remember but all of these um, sari silks just come packaged like this they're absolutely beautiful you've seen me use these um, in a couple of projects um, recently they're just beautiful um, so I'm just going to cut off um, a tiny um, amount of this I think that um, should be enough so let's just um, trim that there like that um, I've got my usual bent over piece of wire that I use as um, a needle to thread things through. So I'm just going to thread this through here like this. It makes it so much easier. I mean, I'd never be able to get that um, sorry silk through otherwise. This colour is called um, rhubarb, by the way, if I didn't um, say. Um, so there we go. I like that. That looks cool. Um, I'm going to do the same um, to the other two as well. Now I just want to add a finishing touch. I've got some charms here. We've got Drink Me, we've got a pack of playing cards and a stopwatch. I've got a whole bag full of Alice um, themed charms here, which I've had in my stash for absolutely ages. I've just got so many charms that I need to use up. So I'm just going to add these using some of these light bulb pins. Which ones do I want to um, add where? I think we'll have Drink Me here. So I'm just going to add that um, on there like that so pop um the the charm through 
and I'm just going to attach it on here like that using the light bulb pin. Oh, hang on. Let's see if I can um, close it. There we go. That's it. Job done. Doesn't that look cute? Um, and again, I'm just going to attach these in exactly the same way. So um, how do I want this to go? Um, I think we'll have the, uh, the playing cards here. So we'll add that one on again in exactly the same way. There we go. And I'm just going to attach the stopwatch onto the last one here. Just like that. Don't those look cute? I keep looking at these and just thinking that the Savvy Silk is just a little bit um, too long. I think I'm going to trim it. I'm going to trim it um, a little bit and see how, how I feel about it. Yeah, I think I like that a um, whole lot better. So I'm just going to trim trim the others as well. I'm going to keep um, the bits that I've trimmed off as well because I can just use those as some um, pieces in my junk journal. So you no, know, nothing, nothing ever ever wasted. But don't those look sweet? So just to recap, this month's prompt is mini month of May because we're going to be focusing on small and mini projects throughout the month. And this week's challenge, as I've said at the beginning of the video, is to either do um, altered playing cards or artist trading cards. Um, I've done three. Please don't feel that you have to do three like I've done here. You know, one is is sufficient. Um, and of course, I know that some of you are going to do much more complicated designs than I've I've done here. But I just hope that this has given you some ideas. I've done lots of projects in the past using altered playing cards. You can see the cards underneath here. Um, these are two out of a set of three that I did and I'll leave the link to this video in the description box below so that will give you some more ideas. This one has got napkin in the background. This one here has got the Tim Holtz Horlogerie paper that I showed you at the beginning of the video um, just with this gorgeous butterfly embellishment so I'll leave the link to that video showing how I made these and some of you will remember this one here this is one of the um, most recent ones that I did again napkin in the background one of the art by Marlene die cuts um, I just love using embellishments on my artist trading cards you know all of them are really simple but I just think by adding simple um, embellishments just you know makes all the difference so I'll leave the link to this one here as well and I've got a whole playlist full of ideas for artist trading cards if anybody is interested in following along with this month's prompt, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium, in the description box below. Please be aware that there are four entry questions that you need to answer in order to get considered for membership within the group. Um, and if you don't answer those questions, your request will just be automatically declined. So please do be um, aware of that. And that just leaves me to say that if you've enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up because as I always say, it really does let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing do let me know what you think in the comments below and if you're not subscribed to my channel i'd really appreciate you following along and hitting the bell notification so that you're notified for any up and coming videos don't forget to go and check out and see what kylie's been up to this week as well but thanks for watching take care everyone and i'll see you all again soon bye for now